Breaking news tonight, a group of 16 Spokane area elected officials releasing a statement condemning armed militia groups seen at protests downtown. The statement was signed by the entire Spokane City Council, Spokane Mayor Nadine Woodward, three state level officials, Spokane County Auditor Vicki Dalton and four Spokane Public Schools school board members as well. That statement reads in part, we as elected leaders from the Spokane community declare that we oppose the presence of armed vigilantes roaming the streets of our city. And more breaking news this afternoon. Two missing Idaho children were found today. Leo Heibel and Jean Heckman were found safe in Lawrence, Kansas. Authorities issued an Amber Alert for them last week after they were last seen in Rathdrum, Idaho. Their mother, Mimi Heibel, has been taken into custody and police are now thanking the public for their help. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us on Kremti News First at Four. I'm Tom Sherry, joined by my colleagues still socially distancing from her beautiful home in northern Spokane. Whitney? Hi, Tom. It's good to see you. Yeah, we have a lot to get to today. A very busy day. Idaho is starting its fourth and final phase of reopening and new guidelines announced today for Washington schools as they get ready to restart in the fall. So that is where we begin tonight. The state superintendent announced today that yes, he does expect that schools will begin with in person classes in the fall. However, there will absolutely be some big changes and that includes students wearing masks during the school day. So we want to know right off the bat. What do you think of that idea? We are asking right now. Do you think it is a good idea for students to wear masks at school? You can let us know on our Creme 2 mobile app. Now, in order to meet Department of Health guidelines, some schools may reopen with a hybrid of face to face or online instruction, but we know students and staff will also be asked to wear a cloth mask. Now, there will be some exceptions like students with certain respiratory conditions or those who have trouble breathing and younger students may be supervised. In fact, they must be supervised when wearing those face coverings. All districts will also need an alternative plan to return to fully remote learning if local health authorities or the governor mandate future closures. I understand that we need to stay safe in the schools, but we already have such a hard time having the kids um, keep their jackets where they need to be and not touching their face or not touching things or washing their hands after the bathroom and just adding face masks to the whole mix just sounds impossible, frankly. So already Spokane area teachers being prepared for the difficulty and challenges that will come from these new guidelines. Parents, students and school districts all across the state have been anxiously awaiting these guidelines, wanting to know what it's going to be like in the fall. So the guidelines we know will shape practices and policies for all public as well as private K through 12 schools in Washington. We want to get to kind of the five main takeaways. So take a look at this list that we put together for you. We know that the OSPI is saying student and staff safety is the top priority. Schools again will be opening this fall for in-person instruction, but physical distancing will be required as well as those cloth face coverings. And there will also be plenty of increased cleaning and sanitation in all school facilities. Now the superintendent was very clear that keeping students and safe Keeping students and staff is going to be very safe, but we also know that it's going to take a lot of preparations to get to that point. So here is the superintendent now of Spokane Public Schools today. Fortunately, uh, we do have quite a few, a bit of space. So it's going to be, look, Jim, in terms of we're going to need to use our spaces differently that we have. Uh, so every nook and cranny, um, so we can do appropriate social distancing. So for example, Chris Rakedahl mentioned even today in the press conference, uh, the important, you know, using our gymnasiums and our cafeterias and uh, many of our staff and students have been through that when we build new schools. So here is what else will be different. Field trips and assemblies may also be canceled. Schools are being asked to maintain that six feet of social distancing within groups of students as much as possible. So that means potential mixing of classes or groups in the cafeteria should be extremely limited. And under this new guidance, schools should also consider having students take their meals outside 
or eat in their classrooms. Now, we did reach out also to the Washington Education Association today. They're in support, of course, of returning to schools as normally as possible, but did question some of these guidelines. So here now is a statement from the WEA. They said, we question if social distancing guidelines can truly be met in many schools across our state, given typical class sizes. School districts must engage early with educators through our local unions to incorporate best practices and ensure equity equitable learning within the OSPI parameters. We also know that a lot of you are going to be asking about fall and even winter sports as we prepare for all of these changes. And the short answer is we still don't have all of the answers yet as far as how will football look like or how will other fall sports look like. We do know that they are going to be looking at each sport individually. So the rules for football may be different than other sports, but we are working to get those answers for you and we will make sure to get them to you just as soon as we learn that information. In the meantime, we asked you earlier, what do you think about the idea of students having to wear a cloth mask or a face covering during the school day. And if we take a look, 53% right now look like they're saying no. So relatively split, split. But we are going to keep this poll going here for the next several hours so we can get a really good gauge of what our community is thinking about this. We've already gotten a lot of comments on social media, in our email, phone calls. So please do let us know what you think. And you can also learn more about these guidelines. All you have to do is text SCHOOLS to 509-448-2000 and we'll make sure to send you the latest information. Tom? Wow, good information there. Hey, this is some good news for folks in Idaho. More of Idaho gets to open up this weekend. So here are three things that you need to know. First, the state is moving into stage four starting this Saturday, June 13th. Now, this is the last stage in Governor Brad Little's rebound Idaho plan. Second, all businesses are allowed to reopen. And third, if you do live in Spokane or out of state, yes, you are allowed to travel to Idaho. In the meantime, our Mark Hanrahan explains what you can expect starting Saturday. Mark. Hey, good afternoon, Tom. A lot of big changes coming that Saturday the 13th, and here's what stage four means. Gatherings of 50 or more people are now allowed. Theaters, bars, and other venues are also allowed to reopen. Large sporting events can operate under limited physical testing protocols. Work from home recommendations will be lifted, and you can start visiting senior living centers. Even though Idaho is moving on to stage four, Governor Brad Little says it is not time to forget social distancing measures. We almost did not make it to stage four this week. Despite our incredible progress, there are still some in Idaho who are not practicing measures to keep themselves and others safe. Even if contracting COVID-19 is low on your personal concerns, I urge you to practice safe measure, measures to protect others. The state's epidemiologist said there has been a surge in coronavirus cases in early June. She said part of that is due to the increase in testing. As Tom mentioned earlier, if you live in Spokane, yes, you can travel to Idaho during stage four. There was some confusion on that during stage three. Previously, out of state visitors from areas of high community spread were encouraged to self quarantine for 14 days. Stage four of Idaho's rebound plan does not mention that rule for out of state visitors. In the newsroom, Mark Hanrahan, Tom, back to you. 266,000 signatures and counting. That is the number of signatures a petition has gotten to repeal Washington's controversial sex education law. That number is far more than what would be needed to qualify for the ballot uh, in March. Governor Jay Inslee signed a bill that would require sex ed teaching to all K through 12 students. Supporters of the bill say the law establishes age appropriate guidelines for the teaching of the content, but it has received lots of criticism from others who say they are concerned about whether young children should be learning any of that. The state will now verify the signatures and make the official de uh, determination on whether this will go on the ballot. And we want to get to three things you need to know regarding the coronavirus. First, new coronavirus cases in Spokane County have dropped to single digits as of today. We saw only five new cases. That gives us a total of 792 and 37 deaths in Spokane County. We had been seeing daily uh, double digit reports since June 1st. Right now, only nine people remain hospitalized. 
Surgeons in Chicago were able to give a set of new lungs to a woman who was recovering from the coronavirus. Northwestern Memorial Hospital is only one of the first health systems to successfully perform the double lung transplant. The woman is in her 20s and she had severe lung damage. She was on a ventilator for almost two months. The surgeons say they hope their success will spur other hospitals to offer the procedure. And the first experimental coronavirus vaccine is on track to begin large scale testing next month. Now the test is to see if the vaccine can really protect you from the virus. The manufacturer Moderna will be testing 30,000 volunteers. The vaccine has shown promising results in early testing. Well, police have abandoned parts of a Seattle neighborhood after weeks of protest in the wake of the George Floyd death. Take a look. This is pretty controversial. They recently completely boarded up the precinct building and left. Protesters have set up camp in Capitol Hill. They're calling Seattle's that neighborhood in Seattle a cop free zone. Protesters have even tagged the Seattle Police Department. They've blurred out the word police. So the sign now reads Seattle People Department. Protesters calling that area the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone or CHAZ for short. They want to turn that East Precinct building now into a community center. This also is our building as we paid for this and we pay for their works and everything that they do is supposed to benefit the people. So just last night, President Trump tweeted to Governor Inslee and the Seattle mayor saying, take back your city now. If you don't, I will. And he called the protesters domestic terrorists. Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin tweeted back saying, make us all safe. Go back to your bunker. Governor Jay Inslee then tweeted back today saying what we will not allow are threats of military violence against Washingtonians coming from the White House. He says the U.S. military serves to protect Americans, not the fragility of an insecure president. There have been numerous clashes between both sides of lawmakers and police and protesters as these protests have continued now for weeks. So certainly uh, kind of a tumultuous situation there in Seattle and we'll continue to follow those developments from both sides. All right, let's switch gears. Let's talk about something that's going to make you feel a little bit better because, Tom, the sun is out. It's really warmed up and quite a lovely day. We're getting closer to the weekend. What say you about the next couple of days? Oh my gosh, it uh, really looks great for the rest of this evening. And then tomorrow, daytime hours look very warm. Highs close to 80 degrees, but keep in mind, I'm tracking thunderstorms developing Friday night and then much cooler weather over the weekend. See that huge low pressure system in the Gulf of Alaska? That's what's going to bring us uh, the unsettled air and the cooler conditions over the weekend as well. But in the meantime, look at these temperatures uh, in the upper 70s and lower 80s in most locations now. We'll look for an overnight low of 56 tonight. We'll look for warmer weather Friday with a high of 80 increasing clouds in central Washington. Those thunderstorms will start in the afternoon and then we think here in eastern Washington, northern Idaho, more likely as we get into say the mid evening hours. We'll look for a daytime high of 80 degrees. Always looking ahead to the weekend. I told you it was a cool front that was heading in Friday night. 62 the high on Saturday with morning rain showers. 64 expected on Sunday as well. We might get a little break from the rain towards midday and again we'll look for a daytime high of 60. With me, I'll have a look at your seven day forecast coming up in just a few minutes. All right, looking forward to it, Tom. Thank you very much. Well, unemployment frustration continues, but the Washington Employment Security Department is now getting some help. We'll let you know how the National Guard is getting involved. And once again, we want to give a big senior shout out tonight. How about this one for Evan Hunt, a senior at Lakeland High School. Evan will be attending the U of I, University of Idaho in the fall, and he will be studying music. So well done, Evan. Keep sending in these shout outs because our seniors deserve it. Text 2020 to 509-448-2000, and we will send you the submission link. We'll be right back.